Well, hello everybody, and welcome to another Minecraft plugin development tutorial series. Today, we are going to be looking at world edit and how to hook into it as a library and how to manipulate schematics. This is going to be really useful if you have, for example, a minigame plugin and you need to automatically reset its map after each round. So we have a sample villager right here. I'm going to demonstrate what I mean. So I'm going to show you how to programmatically set two positions. And please note that while this is similar to world edit, it is not world edit. It is my own code. There we go. Now we sa save the both, both of them and then we can just save it as, for example, villager two. And as you can see, this file now appears inside my data folder. So it, it is fully customized. And then pretty much anywhere in the world, I can just paste it. Oops, not this one. That was for a previous test. Villager 2. There we go. And now you can even see that we have a beautiful villager standing here. Now, before I crack into this, if you want to learn more about Minecraft plugin development and you are interested in perhaps making your own mini games or custom entities and you want to build your own unique servers from the ground up, we have a special training for you called Project Orion. I'll leave the link in the description. There's a couple of spots left open, so if you can check it out, you can join today. You can start the training for up to two months later and you'll be covered with our 30 day money back guarantee, not from the day you enroll, but from the actual date that you start the training, which can be up to two months later. So the first step is we have to get world edit API inside our plugin as developers. Luckily world edit provides us uh, with a Maven repository. And I'm pretty sure you also are able to co configure this for Gradle, but I just assume that most of you guys are following this tutorial series reviews Maven. Maven means uh, this little pom.xml file, this one. So what I did, I simply Googled world that in Maven and literally the first link is going to give you both the repository. So I can just copy this, go to the pom file and then inside where is the repository? Yeah, we have a huge list here. I can just paste it at the bottom. There we go. And then I can just copy the dependency for bucket. You don't need to copy the core, just copy the one for bucket. And I would suggest you place it on top of before paper API so that it takes priority. Now for the purpose of this video, I'm going to be working with the latest 7.3.0 snapshot version because it has more features and there's been some changes. I think pretty much by the time you're watching this video, this one is out as a stable build. If you have that done, just click on load Maven changes, wait a little bit and you should be good to go. Okay guys, so the first thing I did, I made a new class, I just called it world edit hook and inside you will need two methods. One is to save the schematic, remember the save command and then the other one is to paste the schematic into a specific location. Now you're going to be careful with these imports. Some people miss them, so make sure to import location from org.bucket.location package. The first thing inside the save method is going to be the region method and basically what this will do, we have to first create a a three dimensional region from the main, the first location and the secondary position, the secondary location, which is going to work as a cubicle. And this one, again, you have to be very careful when it comes to imports because there's this, there's the same class in multiple packages. So make sure to import the region from com.sq89 q world edit package. And then this one takes in a new cuboid region. And unfortunately, world edit works with its own adaptation for classes which typically have other names in a bucket. So instead of working with location, you work with something called block vector. It looks maybe not so similar, but it holds similar data. It holds X, Y, and Z. However, there needs to be a way to convert that into, uh, to convert bucket into world edit stuff. And for that, they provide something called bucket adapter. That is the reason why I suggest that you import world edit dash bucket. Otherwise you would not have access to this. So we can just call as block vector inside the bucket adapter method, and we can just open up the region uh, from the main location, the first one, which I call the primary, and the second location, which I call the secondary right here. Next up, we have to make something called the edit session. Each operation in world edit is guarded by an edit session. Reason for this, I don't know, but perhaps they wanted to make it more customizable because each edit session has like a start, it has finish, it has a couple of parameters and you know, it's just really uh, fancy if you are some super advanced developer that want to customize the whole thing. This one takes a little bit to create. 
So I've made a little bit of a helper method called create edit session. This one is going to take a bucket world. And here it's quite important that you import this explicitly. Otherwise you will run into issues because this world is actually from world edit package. So maybe you need to import at least one explicitly and perhaps I'll just import both so that you can see this a little bit better. And perhaps you can get rid of this one completely. Yeah, you can just copy this, paste it inside new edit session, just like this one. And now it should work, perhaps. Uh, maybe we'll have to return to this later. So you have to be careful with the package names. Basically, how to make a new edit session, just go to world edit, open up the main instance, and then call new edit session. And then this one takes in a world. So again, we have to convert bucket world into world edits world uh, using bucket adapter. Here, there is a couple of side effects which you can find. I'll post a link to it in the video description, especially for 7.3.0. Uh, this is, I believe, new feature. And I just loaded it with a default setting uh, because I simply had no reason to, to make this video three hours long and explain all the intricacies if you just need to copy and paste stuff. Now, going back to the save method, here is where it, where it starts to get a little bit complicated. So try to bear with me as good as you can. And I'll explain everything line by line. So the first thing we have to do is create a clipboard. Now, there's a bunch of types of, of clipboards. The easiest one is simply a block array. So you can think about this as a clipboard that will simply copy a list of blocks, right? And luckily, you can make a new block array clipboard and use the region that we made uh, to put in it. And then you cannot say clipboard dot do the work. The way that the operation will actually take place is a little bit more complicated because we have to create the operation itself, which is called forward extend copy. Doesn't make a lot bunch of sense to me, but I'm pretty sure that the devs might have had a good reason to call it this way. And this one is a little bit more complicated. It takes in the edit session, takes in the region, takes in the clipboard, and finally takes in the minimum point, which I believe is the primary location that is where I was standing in the game that I typed when I typed position one. Now you'd be thinking we're done, we're not done. We actually have to call another piece of block, another code of block, another block of code, sorry, and this one is called operations. And then we have to complete the copy inside the complete method. And this one will complain because it apparently throws unchecked exceptions. So we have to surround it with a world edit exception and catch it here. Great. So now we have an object inside our memory. Finally, it's time to save it into a file. And the way we're going to do so is by using a closer. So a closer comes from not Google package, but actually world edit package. And this one deals with basically open. It's, it's basically a helper for this whole operation. Again, I think it's overcomplicated, but the way this, that's the way it works. So, you know, please just bear with me. That's why I'm making this video because it can be confusing if you don't follow anything. And inside a closer, oh, well, first of all, sorry, first of all, we have to make sure to close the closer. Thankfully, we can just use Java 8 feature called auto close. So if you put this inside the, the try block at the very end, uh, you don't have to call closer.close. This will be done by Java automatically. And then of course, make sure to catch any exceptions because when working with file streams, uh, these also throw unchecked exceptions. Okay. So the first thing we have to make a new file output stream. And that the way we can do so is simply use the closure to register a new file output stream for the schematic file. This will return the one that we can actually use. And then we can create a new clipboard writer by again calling closure re register, and then it will, it will actually ask for the format. So the format is basically the dot scam file format, right? If I attempt to open this with say notepad, it's gonna give me a lot of garbage, but this is actually the format of these blocks, right? And I just decided to go with the latest one, Sponge version three. If you're coding for an older Minecraft version, you have to check but you know, I think your best bet is just to test it yourself and to see whatever works uh, for me on 1.20 plus sponge V3 works just fine. And then when you do so, you have to get the writer for this schematic and the writer is whatever we have to register to get the clipboard writer. Unless you have IQ 200, you would not just figure it out. And then finally, we have to call the writer, write, and then finally um, the clipboard, which we created up above here. 
thankfully, thank God, I've survived the safe operation and now it will work just fine. Moving on to the paste operation. So first things first, we have to make the edit session. Thankfully, we already have a method for it. So that one is easy. And then we have to start reading the file on our disk, for example, villager or test or villager to file. So for that, we have to actually open this as a clipboard format and you can use clipboard formats find by file and you can just open the file directly and world edit is smart here thankfully at least somewhere and it's going to figure out uh, the format so it should automatically find that it uses sponge v3 now remember here we used to have a clipboard writer well here we're going to have something called clipboard reader that's right so we have to call the format get reader new file input stream and don't worry it's complaining i'll, I'll fix that in a moment and then the actual clipboard, which is the actual schematic object, we can actually get if you call reader.read. Quite easy, surprisingly. Now, what's less easy than that is actually working with these operations. So the operations that complete, you might already be familiar with. However, how do we actually create an, a, a paste operation? Well, there isn't such as forward extend paste, unfortunately, but there is something called new clipboard holder for the schematic file, create paste, for the edit session and then two and then this takes in the location so where i'm standing from my own position it's going to paste all these blocks in a certain direction and then it's going to build it convert the holder into an operation which we can run right here maybe you can even paste this inside but for the sake of simplicity i just like to have these two explicitly all right there's a lot of complaints so we have to just make it very cheap and I'll just for the sake of demo of this video I'll just surround it with try and catch and I throw and I catch every exception right here all right guys magic happened I did code the command behind the scenes the reason being I already have a video on how to make commands so please refer back to that video it's one of the first ones first five ones in this channel and I just want to save your time because I think that the com command logic you're already familiar with however I still want to show this to you because it has a couple of unique features to it first of all we have to basically store uh, the first location and the second location for every player using the command somewhere so I typically don't really recommend storing this inside the same command but this is just a demo plugin right if you do want to make this properly then put it inside for example player cache class so to do move into player cache and then you can actually store more than just this tuple however here all i did i simply came up with a very simple idea of storing this in a map the unique id is per player so each player has a unique id and the tuple basically holds two keys the first one and the second one being the primary and the secondary location and the tuple actually doesn't really exist i could not import this re reliably from uh, minecraft because it's not stored inside bucket so what i did i simply implemented the class right here again extremely simple it holds any key as the first and any key as the b and if you just want to make the tuple for location you can obviously just delete the a b and replace it with location that's also going to work although this one a little bit has a little bit higher coding standard and maybe yeah you can even make the class static as IntelliJ suggests just make sure not to create these as finals because we're going to be calling the set first set second later on so first things first i simply check if we are dealing with a player and then if we are uh, putting in some command arguments such as position one position two save or a paste then we need to get the actual plugin instance and i can just read it, get rid of the finals so it doesn't confuse you and then i'll just cast the player to uh, from the sender and then i simply read whatever i typed in so whatever i typed after the, the space after typing the region command right here and then we need to get the actual selection so for that i simply call get or default for the player unique id and if this is not stored in the map instead of it returning a null i'll simply return a new tuple with both keys as null this is important because we can actually set these two keys and then if the par parameter equals to position one we can actually set the first key to where i'm standing you can obviously change this to whatever you want to i sent the player a nice message with a color and an emoji obviously you can change it to whatever you want to and then i simply store uh, the selection inside the sorry the whole tuple inside the map 
per the player. Similarly, I do the same thing for the second secondary position. And then when it comes to the saving mechanism, what we do is, let me just rename this because in the back scene when I was making the first take of this video, I just called the command schematic. So here what we do, we simply check if we uh, set both the first and the second position. If not, I'll simply say, hey, please set both positions first uh, before calling the save command. And likewise, we also need to specify the name. So the length of the arguments, remember here, we simply check it if it's at least one. Well, when it comes to saving, it has to be at least two because not only I have to type in save, but now I also have to type in the name. And then we simply open up the file. We're going to open up the file inside the data folder of the plugin which is, where is that? It's this file, right? Inside plugins, the data folder is always the name of your plugin. So this is what's inside. Inside here, I wanna make sure to have a folder called schematic and inside of which I'll simply create the file by the name. Now I also made it so if you don't have a schematic folder, then Java is going to automatically make it for you. So if the parent file doesn't exist, the parent file being the schematic folder because the file is actually the actual uh, schematic. So if the folder doesn't exist, if this folder doesn't exist, we simply make it as a directory. And then here, this one is now called world edit hook. We can just call the save method from the first position, the second position, and then the location can actually be simplified to this because this is just a duplicate. There we go. And then I simply say, hey, the schematic has been saved. Likewise, the paste operation also requires us to put in a name, just like this one. And then we simply create uh, the file. So I can maybe rename the, the location file right here. So here, we're just going to read the file from the schematic folder, check if it exists. If not, I just say schematic not found. And then here I'm gonna again go to world edit hook and I simply paste it from wherever I'm standing and I'll simply paste this file, there we go. And then if I type in something else, such as, I don't know, region and I make a typo re here, right? Well, it's gonna say that uh, this is what I should type in. Or maybe you can perhaps return false here, but then you have to return true for all of these if statements. So I just decided to simplify it. If you check the commands video, I'm also gonna teach you how to make the subcommands, uh, how to make the parameters tab completed. So you can go ahead and check that. This video doesn't cover that. However, what I'm gonna do at the very end, I'll boot you in the game and we'll be testing it together. Now, lastly, if you're making a new command, please make sure to register it inside the plugin.yml folder or file as well as inside the on enable in your main plugin class. So this is gonna work with world edit. However, if you do have also world guard installed, please change the command label to something else. Now, before I do test it, make sure to actually put the edit session from a field right here inside the try and catch block because it turns out, surprise, surprise, actually, I did not expect that, that we have to put it here, that we without this, it will not work. Okay, so we have to close this and you can either ca call close at the end or you can simply hack this around, place it in try and catch and it's gonna work now. Okay, so in the game, I'm going to type region position one and I'm going to show this on this little arena over here. Let me just go to the other corner, type in position two and then let, let me just fly away, there we go. And now we are going to be saving this, so save arena. And if I look into my plugins, co canoon, we can already see that we have the file properly saved. And then here, if I type in region paste arena, paste it, it should almost crush me, there we go. And now it appears this way and it's beautiful. It's really the exact copy as what I paste it. So I hope that you've learned something new. Obviously, you don't need to be pasting it where you're standing. You can just find the minimum point of your minigame. You can just paste it in there if you want to automate it. And feel free to check out the official world edit documentation, even though it might be a little bit too complicated. So I hope that this video was helpful. Check out Project Orion if you want to learn more, even deeper stuff, even more advanced stuff than this. And I will see you guys next time.